final run of the Genesis Invitational from Riviera Country Club in Pacific Palisades, California. 23 year old Chilean Joaquin Neiman looking to go wire to wire. Got some company on Sunday. Colin Morikawa ended the day eight back of the lead here on seven. This is fourth shot beneath the hole chips it up and it goes in for birdie. Great shot by Morikawa, but he's not done here on 10. Second shot about 90 feet away and he jars it for Eagle. Again, he entered the day eight shots back would get as close as two back. 665 in the final round, tied for second at 17 under. Joaquin Neiman, 54 hole leader. And then you can do, I can do better on 11 from 45 feet. Got it! Third eagle of the week for Neiman. Now at 21 under. PGA Tour rookie Cameron Young in contention. Playing on a sponsor's exemption here on 15. Third shot, 53 yards away. Oh, baby! What a shot by Cameron Young. Yankee fan. Now it's 17 under, inching closer and closer. Three strokes back at Neiman. Here's Neiman on 15, trying to maintain that three-stroke lead. Uh-uh. Lips out. He settled for bogey. Second straight bogey. So he drops to 20 under. To 18. Neiman up two strokes on both Young and Morikawa. Looking at a 26-foot birdie putt. Joaquin Neiman. Don't want to do anything crazy. Just get it up there nice and close. And that's exactly what he does. A couple of feet away. That's a gimme. And Joaquin Neiman for par goes wire to wire to win the Genesis Invitational, his second PGA Tour victory. First wire to wire winner at the Genesis Invitational since 1969. And consider he was plus 4,500 to win entering round one. Talk about a long shot. Joaquin Neiman wins by two shots over Colin Morikawa and Cameron Young at 19 under par. Talking post round with Amanda Valionis. Joaquin Neiman taking in this moment. You've officially won in wire to wire fashion. The first since Charlie Sifford did it back in 1969. What did it take to sleep on this lead every night and never come back to the field? Oh my God, this weekend. It took me forever. I felt that weekend, it felt like a month. Uh, but yeah, I'm so happy it's finally done. I'm really proud of, of, of the way we battle with my caddy, with Gary, uh, all the hard work. And yeah, it's, it's nothing like this. this is amazing. And seeing the Chilean flag right there gives me a little more speechless. So it's awesome. These fans have loved you all week. Every win feels different. This is your second victory. But what does it mean to be the winner of Tiger's event? Having Sergio Garcia, Carlos Ortiz, your girlfriend, all of them here waiting to celebrate with you on one of the toughest tracks with one of the strongest fields. What does that mean? Yeah, uh, there is no words to describe. I mean, it was such a such a nice week of the course in the course. I mean, every night we're having dinner with my friend, with Sergio, Carlos, me. I mean, everybody's here. So I think there is nothing more important than that. And I'm really thankful for that. Max Homa said last year when he won, it changed his confidence. He feels like there's no one that he's going to face that he can't beat. What does the confidence do when you win on a place like this? I mean, this has got to be one of the toughest courses we ever play during the year. And yeah, it obviously surprised me myself how good I played. And but yeah, after the first two days on the weekend, I just talked to myself like, all right, we got to finish this, stay focused. and. Yeah, we did it pretty good, so I'm pretty happy. <laughs> Finish it, you did. Take a look. They're all here for you. Joaquin Neiman, you are officially the champion of the Genesis Invitational. Great stuff there. Joaquin Neiman, the second youngest winner in tournament history and the fourth wire-to-wire -wire winner in Genesis Invitational history. Uh, Going to take home more than two million bucks is the 23-year-old Chilean Joaquin Neiman. Have a week, kid. This Genesis Invitational Recap is presented by the all-new TaylorMade Stealth Driver. Welcome to the Carbonwood Age, and we welcome in CBS Sports HQ golf analyst Kyle Porter. Joaquin Neiman wins the Genesis Invitational wire-to-wire. -wire. His iron play was awesome all week, Kyle. How was he able to remain steady from start to finish? No, I mean, you said it right there. Tita Green, he was unbelievable. I mean, he, he gained almost 20 strokes on this field, and the majority of them were from Tita Green. Now, he putted well. He's not necessarily a, a great putter, but when you have guys like Neiman, who are unbelievable ball strikers, 
and they and they have plus putting weeks like he had this week. This is this is what you get. You know, I, I thought it was interesting, Hakeem, that uh, he didn't play, you know, the back nine on either Saturday or Sunday all that well. Uh, and yet he kind of just he kind of just hung on at the end. And, and, and it was it was a little bit, I, I thought, uh, of an impressive showing of how you build a lead early. Remember, he gets to 16 under on on Friday night. And then you just kind of play defense the rest of the way. He wasn't he, he was still aggressive, but he was uh, certainly not making dumb mistakes, mistakes that maybe other 23 year olds uh, in more inexperienced guys uh, would possibly make to get themselves into a position where all of a sudden you're making double or triple and then Colin Morikawa is staring you down and you've got you've got some problems. So Neiman stayed away from that. Uh, he really did a great job, I thought, of defending that lead from, from Saturday morning on. And uh, as a result, he gets the biggest win of his career. A lot of great young players on the PGA Tour right now. And certainly Joaquin Neiman stamping his name now with his second PGA Tour victory at 23 years old. The youngest winner of this event since 1926. You remember, this field was stacked. Top 11 players in the world. It's the 32nd ranked player who wins as Neiman wins more than $2 million. Put this into perspective. What does a win like this mean for Neiman? Well, I, I think for him, it, it really elevates him to where I kind of already thought of him. You know, I, I, it's, it's interesting because he's only uh, 23 years old, but this was his, I believe, 98th event as a professional on the PGA Tour, Hakeem. So he's been out there for a long time and he hasn't won very much. He won the Greenbrier a couple years ago, but this was, you know, I said, I think earlier this week on the First Cut podcast, like, we need a, a, a Neiman at Riviera week or a Neiman at the Memorial week where it's like, oh yeah, this dude's really good. Now, is he gonna go on to win multiple majors? I don't know about that. I think he can contend to win majors. I think he can contend to win a player's championship. But for me, it was it was really a validation of kind of how I already viewed him and how a lot of people inside golf already viewed him as a really great ball striker. Not in like the JT and Morikawa class, but, but certainly up there. I mean, a really, really good hitter. Uh, and, and so people don't tend to pay attention to that unless you win tournaments. And now that he's got a Riviera win uh, of all places, I think more and more people will start to pay attention and say, wait a second, Joaquin Neiman's pretty good. You know, I want to put it into perspective as well on Joaquin Neiman and what he did. The difficulty to go wire to wire. I mean, he's the fourth only uh, player to ever do this, to go wire to wire and win this event. Speak to the difficulty about how tough this is to, to leave on Thursday and then keep that lead all the way to the final hole on Sunday. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's interesting because he, he said the, this weekend has felt like it lasted a month, um, which is is kind of the right way to say it because it's not just the physical difficulty. It's one thing to go out, shoot 63-63 at Riviera on Thursday, Friday. That's incredibly difficult. You and I are not doing that, Hakeem. You and I are not doing that on our best ball, Hakeem. Um, but emotionally, it's, it's, it's harder on the weekend to do what he did, right? He, he wasn't as good... Uh, physically on the weekend, he was what three under uh, over his last two rounds. But emotionally, to have to look at the board constantly and see JT Morikawa, uh, Scotty Scheffler, uh, Adam Scott. Oh yeah, he won the Masters. All these guys that Neiman grew up watching and, and probably idolizing. To have those guys trying to run you down all weekend, just emotionally, that's a taxing thing. And so for him, it, it's less about the physical impressiveness. Uh, and more about what he did uh, emotionally to kind of just keep himself in check, make those wise decisions that I talked about earlier and go on to win the golf tournament. Yeah, and that's what he said going into Sunday. He said, I'm having the time of my life right now. I'm just going to remain calm here and do what I've done the first three rounds. And he ends up pulling it off, going wire to wire, the fourth ever to go wire to wire to win this event at Riviera. Now, news on Sunday. Two of golf's biggest stars said they're fully committed to the PGA Tour. Dustin Johnson ended speculation about joining the Saudi-backed Super Golf League. Then Bryson DeChambeau followed. Kyle, you wrote about this on CBSSports.com. So with DJ and Bryson pledging their loyalty, explain the impact. How do you think that this will resonate on the PGA Tour? Well, you know, I think, I don't know if you've seen this quote yet. It just came out, Hakeem, but uh, Rory was talking about how, like, listen, this thing is, I mean, Rory said this after his round at Riviera on Sunday. He said, this thing's dead. Like, are they going to get Greg Norman to tee it up in the event? Like, you, you, are you even going to be able to get 48 guys? And I think, you know, Phil is the big name, obviously, that was out there and obviously is kind of the global icon that any league would want in terms of a name, but the game isn't there. I mean, he, he won the PGA last year, but that's really all he's done for the last three, four, five years. And so 
the, uh, any any rival league that would start would need a DJ, would need a Bryson, who are still top 10, top 8, top 6 players in the game. And when you don't have that, then you get Phil, who's a name, and then a bunch of other guys who are, I don't know, C-listers, maybe a couple of B-listers. It's just, it's not something that engenders a lot of excitement or a lot of hope uh, for uh, any future league that uh, that might get started. Yeah, Brooks Kepka uh, already said he wasn't interested in the Super League. He missed the cut this week at the Genesis Invitation. He'll be back next week at the Honda Classic at PJ National in Palm Beach Gardens. The field includes 12 players ranked the top 50, including Kepka and Daniel Berger. Kyle, what will you be watching for at the Honda Classic next week? Well, it's going to be a tough test. You know, I, I think one of the themes of the West Coast, Akeem, was how easy a lot of these courses were. I, I don't necessarily think that about Riviera, even though the scoring was pretty low. But you saw low scores, low scores, low scores winning these tournaments. And PJ National is not like that. And especially if the wind up is not going to play like that. So, yeah, it's not a great field, especially compared to what we've seen the last two weeks at Phoenix and Riviera. But uh, you're going to see some, I, I think, really interesting golf because uh, of those conditions, because it's so hard. So it's certainly different uh, than a lot of what we see in the 20 under, 25 under, 30 under uh, on this West Coast swing. Joaquin Neiman also in the field as he wins for the second time his PGA Tour career, winning the Genesis Invitational on Sunday at Riviera. Kyle Porter wrapping it up for us here on CBS Sports HQ. Kyle, thanks. All right, the future of driver performance begins with the 60X carbon twist face comprised of 60 layers of carbon sheets strategically arranged for better energy transfer and faster ball speeds across a larger area of the face. Scan the QR code to learn more. And for more awesome golf content, join Rick Gaiman, Kyle Porter, their crew on the First Cut Podcast. You get tournament previews, including DFS picks and analysis. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.